Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day, even on a Monday. We hope you're having a fantastic Monday and you had an incredible weekend. There was lots of entertainment to consume over the weekend, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in today's show. But we've got a rundown to get you, and uh, thank you, everybody, who is joining us for EP Live or for all of you that watch this as an archive later on. You all rock. But this one's going out to ZRO Beast. Thank you, Vic and the EP team, both former and and current for uploading these old episodes for us to relive the amazing era in gaming. He's talking about uh, Season 5, which we kicked off over the weekend. We put the first episode up there, and it was cool to see Tommy talking with Mark Hamill. Such a great episode. All right, ZRO Beast, this rundown's all yours. Grand Theft Auto Online is getting a very cool and groovy new expansion. Rockstar has confirmed rumors that the game is getting a nightclub expansion, which will allow players to buy, customize, and manage their very own nightclubs. This is similar to the existing executive updates, where players could buy and manage other criminal businesses, so you'll, of course, be able to use your nightclub as a front for your illicit endeavors. It sounds like the game will also be getting new music as part of the update. It arrives next month. It's interesting that I'm reading about this uh, today because of uh, how things turn out in Luke Cage Season 2, which uh, I, I will have a review for you very soon. Um, but uh, yeah, nightclubs obviously very big part in uh, storytelling around sort of gangland, uh, gangland activities like this. Uh, so I think this is going to be a natural. And holy crap, hats off to GTA Online for constantly bringing new content out and making that game so enticing. I don't have time to go back and keep playing this thing. I know that Blake plays this game like crazy, um, but it is still making huge amounts of money, but more importantly, making a ton of people very, very happy. That's how you do it. I like the fact that Strauss Zelnick, though, has been saying that single player is not dead, not by a long shot, and obviously there's a huge single player component in Red Dead Redemption 2, but we're going to be seeing a lot of stuff like this, I think, in Red Dead Redemption 2. Maybe not nightclubs with cars in Red Dead Redemption 2, but uh, you know, impressive from Rockstar. Nonetheless, congrats, and um, excited to see what's next with these guys. And every time I read one of these things, it's like, look, I got to stop everything that I'm doing and load up GTA 5 again and play some GTA online. Uh, so maybe I will. A few big details about the next big Spider-Man movie have come swinging in. Over the weekend, Spider-Man star Tom Holland revealed that the character's next live-action solo movie will be titled Spider-Man Far From Home, and the news has since been confirmed by Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige. Like last year's Spider-Man Homecoming, the title Far From Home could have multiple meanings for both the character and the story, seeing Peter Parker venture into strange new territory. It's still unclear how the next film will account for the events of Avengers Infinity War, but we'll have to wait and see. It comes out next summer. Before that, the animated movie Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, featuring the Miles Morales version of the character, arrives this December. It's a good time to be a Spider-Man fan, huh? Tom Holland is killing it at his uh, constant joke of revealing all kinds of uh, information when he's not supposed to. He's very good at that. I like this Far From Home title, but that, of course, sets up Spider-Man 3 to be something uh, with the word home in it as well, because they've got to keep this theme going. Um, but yes, it's going to be interesting to see how they answer all of this stuff. Some of the answers I think are going to be coming in the Captain Marvel movie, which comes out before Avengers 5, 4, 5, what are we on, 4? Four, Avengers 4, uh, and then then we'll get Spider-Man. But I think a lot of answers are going to start trickling in. It's going to be very hard. you got to do a lot of this on the social medias, a lot of this, a lot of this. You know, you just can't reveal all the stuff because the secrets are coming, but... Um, I think it has something to do with those zany stones that Thanos was after. All right, the Jurassic World franchise won't be going extinct anytime soon. The new film, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, debuted in North America over the weekend, earning 150 million bucks to give it the fourth biggest opening of the year so far. Overseas, the film is doing even better. It's already earned more than 700 million thanks to the fact that it's been out for as long as two weeks in some territories. Although the numbers are down slightly from the last film, this shows that Jurassic World is still a very profitable franchise for you. Universal Pictures, and audiences won't be getting sick of dinosaurs for a while. As for what's next, Universal already greenlit a third film a few months ago, so it's currently in development, 
it will hit theaters in summer 2021. I am one of those people that is sick of dinosaurs on film. I'm sick of the whole Jurassic Park um, sort of uh, mechanics and the theme and the uh, the repeat, the cliches that we've seen. Nothing has come close to touching Steven Spielberg's first Jurassic Park movie, and they keep sort of trying this. And one thing I didn't mention in my review is that the CG effects aren't that great. There's a couple of cool effects. The volcano I talked about a lot, but the, uh, the dinosaurs and stuff, especially when we have dinosaurs and humans together, they're still not that great. They're okay, um, and, and that's kind of surprising because this thing makes all the money. You'd think that it would be revolutionary every single time they put the dinos on screen with the people, but it's not. I feel like when they first did it in Jurassic Park, it was more realistic, it was more believable, and it was also more surprising. So not surprising, these Jurassic Park movies. And uh, I mean, maybe the next one will be good. That's what I say every time, but maybe the next one will be good because clearly the, the dinosaurs are off the island because a volcano, just, well, you know. Uh, anyways, over to an even bigger film franchise. More details about the future of Star Wars have come in. Last week, reports surfaced that Disney was putting future Star Wars spinoff movies on hold following the poor box office reception of Solo, A Star Wars Story. Disney and Lucasfilm then seemingly denied the report, saying that new films are still in active development, although they didn't say when those new movies might arrive. Now, The Hollywood Reporter, quoting unnamed sources within the studio, claims that Lucasfilm hasn't slowed down the development of new movies, but they are rethinking their strategy about how to proceed. One source claims that they're trying to figure out how to make and market the new films differently to avoid the same fate as Solo. It's unclear how they'll be changing the films. The next Star Wars film will be Episode 9, which is due out in December 2019. This is the internet's favorite topic right now, is trying to figure out how Disney and Lucasfilm can save their Star Wars franchise. You know, this is a franchise that doesn't really need saving. It's beloved and will be beloved for generations to come. It just needs a, a breath sometimes. It needs a little bit of uh, rejiggering and refashioning and uh, maybe re-releasing of, uh, of the original trilogy uh, in their untouched form on 4K Blu-ray, Disney, now that you're buying Fox. Uh, but no, I think uh, what we're probably going to see is some interesting new decisions made. I heard a rumor that the Obi-Wan movie that we've been talking about might be a, uh, uh, a series that's put into the streaming service that Disney is working on. So maybe it's like a, it's like a yearly series of films I, that are just available online like uh, like one of the Netflix projects or something like that, but for the new Disney streaming service. They are going to have to be smart with all this because we are about to be inundated again with new animated, new live action, and episode 9 information. Um, and I think that's what 2019 is going to be all about. And I think there's a new uh, Star Wars celebration um, event that's going to be happening next year where people are going to have a lot of questions about the future of Star Wars. I don't think that um, uh, we have seen the end of spin-off movies. Um, and I think the Obi-Wan movie makes a lot of sense. I think the Boba Fett movie is something to be very concerned about, even if James Mangold is going to be the writer and director of it. Awesome choice there. But the fact that Solo didn't do well, uh, and Han Solo is a much bigger person and a much bigger character within the Star Wars uh, yeah, you know, galaxy, I think it's going to be a little dangerous for them to make a Boba Fett movie. And how do they make a Boba Fett movie that's supposed to be a prequel without using Alden Ehrenreich and that association with with him as the the, the, the Han Solo uh, of a failed movie is not a good thing to kind of reposition and remarket a new uh, bounty hunter flick. They've got they've got some challenges, no question. And I think so much of the future uh, sort of goodwill around Star Wars. Because here's what happens: if Episode Nine doesn't meet expectations and doesn't do well um, financially, or but it misses marks, then they take a break and they take a breather, and then they bring it all back in some epic new crescendos with uh, with you know uh, creators that bring some new hype and some new stories and some new ideas to to the universe and to the franchise. It's a very interesting time, and I don't think there's another franchise that we can kind of point to that has had these kinds of dilemmas, you know? And uh, it's going to be very cool to see how this all sort of unravels. I'm, I'm hoping J.J. pulls it off. I loved Force Awakens. I loved the... Uh, the um I don't know, the goodwill that they brought back for Star Wars and, the, and the, the sense of love that they brought back for Star Wars. Even if you don't love the movie, they did an effective job at sort of recrafting a universe that we cared about with that film. And I hope that they do it again with Episode Nine. but uh, no doubt this will not be the last time that we are talking about this. But it's time to take a look in the rearview mirror at this day in Everything Cool.
Welcome to This Day and Everything Cool for June 25th. Do androids dream of electric sheep? On this day in 1982, movie audiences got to see things you people wouldn't believe. Ridley Scott's seminal science fiction movie, Blade Runner, was released in theaters, starring Harrison Ford as a futuristic detective on the hunt for killer robots. The film takes place in a bleak and atmospheric future brought to life with breathtaking visual effects, and despite the futuristic setting, the story was inspired by the tone of old film noir detective stories, making it a neo-noir. With all that awesome, you'd think Blade Runner would have been a huge hit, but it wasn't. The film bombed at the box office, and it didn't find new life until a few years later on home video. Blade Runner slowly but surely gained a reputation among film lovers and science fiction fans, leading Scott to recut the film and release a director's cut in 1992. This version of the film had several controversial changes, but no matter what version of Blade Runner you prefer, the film stands as one of the best in the sci-fi genre. A sequel, Blade Runner 2049, was released in 2017, and like like its predecessor, it also bombed at the box office. Tell me you've all seen Blade Runner. You have? Yes? Yes? Let me, I can't hear you. Yes? You got your hands up? I can see you. Uh, it's great to have everybody here. Wesley West, the fat chimp, Doongi Forever, Terrence Foreman, Adrian Leon, uh, Kyo Mebi, uh, Abby Jamison. Uh, it's fantastic. Wesley West, Taz is in there, Samian 111, Ryan Landis. Uh, yeah, Blade Runner was awesome and classic and uh, very cool side note story here because we're live and it's just us. We're just hanging out. My uncle took my brother and I to uh, the Seattle Space Needle before Blade Runner came out. We were kids, so this was a uh, long time ago. And uh, um, they had a an exhibition of Sid Mead's uh, production design, so his artwork and the models, and they had a full-size spinner car, and they had all of these details showing off some of the production work of Blade Runner before I saw the movie. And I was a kid, so it was an R-rated movie, but some like I, I don't think it mattered back then. But I saw all of this incredible stuff, and then I saw the movie, and uh, totally blew my mind. And then years later at E3, got to interview Sid Mead at uh, E3. Crazy, crazy world. Um, and I get Christmas cards. I'm on his mailing list. And so I get Christmas cards from uh, from Sid Mead every year, which is just incredible. Uh, but all of that work was inc it just insane. And that movie rocks. And the sequel's as good, Blade Runner 2049. But uh, both bombs. Boo. All right, let's talk about something that uh, looked like it could have been a, a, in a little bit of a jeopardy because of some recent moves that Marvel and Netflix have uh, been taking. And I'm looking at you, Iron Fist, and I'm looking at you, uh, The Defenders. But... Uh, the batting average for the Netflix Marvel shows is actually pretty good. I watched the first three episodes of uh, Luke Cage season two on Friday before we went live, and then uh, I proceeded to watch everything else over the weekend. So I put in a good 10 hours of television time watching the full uh, season, and I uh, had a terrific time, man. I love this show. I love the uh, the flavors of the show. I love, and I talked a little bit about this in my my uh, early review last week, but I love that there's so much time spent um, w on the music of these episodes and the musical guests that they have throughout the, throughout the season. KRS-One pops up. We've got, uh, you know, fantastic blues musicians, fantastic reggae musicians, um, great kind of soulful singing all the way through. And you see the characters, you know, react to the music and, are, and sort of interact with the music, which is so great. The nightclub, um, you know, feature Heaven's Paradise or Harlem's Paradise, which features so prominently in the, uh, the storyline and is a major set piece. Like everybody congregates there. The whole, you know, burb or the whole area of Harlem comes to party and let loose and, and uh, connect with each other there. It's, of course, Alfred Woodward's um, uh, uh, Mar Marion Stokes. I forget what her name is in the... Uh, Right, well, it's after, oh, uh, Mariah, yes. Mariah Dillon or Mariah Stokes. It's her hangout and her place. And she uh, just likes to sort of sit in the roost and look down at everybody and, and feel the music and feel like she's in charge. And of course, she gets confronted by um, Bushmaster in season two. And I think the reason why season two is so effective and I liked it more than season one is that the uh, the villains don't let you down I, I loved Cottonmouth in the first season but if you watch that season and I'm spoiling a little bit here he uh, is removed from the show a little bit too soon and then we have uh, uh, Diamondback or Diamond I think, I think it's Diamondback comes in and, and is just punching Luke Cage and it just felt a little bit like we went into 
you know, full on comic book mode when so much of season one was sort of grounded and felt realistic and and felt like, you know, we were actually in Harlem that we could understand. And season two doesn't really do that. I, even though um, Bushmaster has got some abilities and some augments from uh, some of the herbs and some of the, uh, you know, the ingredients that he sort of imbibes, he still had, there's a believability there. And we even get this incredible kind of backstory with Bushmaster where we go to Jamaica and we see why he's got so much hatred for, um, uh, uh, I forgot, I always forget her name, uh, for Mariah Dillon, uh, who says Mariah Stokes. And he's always saying Mariah Stokes because the Stokes family uh, really did terrible things to Bushmaster's family. And we see a little bit of that, and I thought that was fantastic. And we also see the pain that Mariah Stokes has got, and she's got family members that she's got to contend with, and we see the ripple effects. We feel the ripples of the the, uh, the heaviness of that happened in season one as well. This is a show where consequence is, you know, wonderfully illustrated on screen, and we see in Luke Cage, played by Mike Coulter, this guy that's sort of, you know, bounced around, and he, he's uh, his bulletproof skin has kind of put him in the middle of all of this conflict and hatred and sometimes it's against his will but he also starts to um, really appreciate his opportunity and his responsibility and he kind of revels in it a little bit and uh, there's a little bit of a, um, a, a Luke Cage celebration going on around Harlem people are wearing his t-shirts and everybody knows him and and uh, he's become a bit of a celebrity until he gets uh, punched out by Bushmaster and then he sort of uh, you know they show a little bit of uh, Luke Cage his frailty in here and and also his hurt ego it's just so many layers and so much subtlety and so much wonderful filmmaking you know coupled with this incredible soundtrack I I was just in heaven I thought it was just magnificent also Iron Fist does come back into this show and he actually does a pretty good job um, being a good partner to Luke Cage and training him and teaching him how to kind of breathe and and feel you know, a little bit more centered and not to feel like he's just this clenched guy that's just ready to explode all the time. And we see that sort of arc and that transformation throughout the season as well. I loved it. And uh, some of the horrible crimes uh, have repercussions and some of the uh, the awful things that some characters do, they get karma. Uh, they get some, you know, some payback, which was uh, really cool to see. I loved Missy Knight in this sh that season as well. And uh, Theo Rossi, who plays Shades, is also, uh, in, you know, really, really fun to watch. B totally bottled up. He's got this kind of secret life uh, from his prison relationships that he's trying to keep away from uh, Mariah, who has become a big love interest for him in season two. Um, and there's just, a, you know, it doesn't pull any punches. There's some really heavy, violent sequences in here. There's some great fight scenes. Um, and there's some horrific crimes that are, are, are committed. And because of that, uh, the, the sort of maturity of the show, just like in Daredevil, just like in Jessica Jones, uh, you, you know, really bubbles to the top and makes it unique and makes it special. And also, you know, I really hope that Disney keeps its gloves off of this Marvel Netflix kind of relationship, you know, like with The Punisher as well. We're getting these shows that are um, sort of the R-rated look at, uh, you know, the street crime in the Marvel Universe and it's done so exceptionally well. And Luke Cage is very special. I loved season two. I can't wait for more. And I think we're going to have a long wait. Uh, but hopefully the rest of the Marvel and Netflix partnership is as good as this. I'm going to give season two of Luke Cage a nine out of ten. And I recommend that you watch all of season one and all of season two. If you haven't yet, I think you're going to be very impressed. But now let's take a look back in time at a great buried treasure. Of course, we all know Hideo Kojima from the Metal Gear franchise and his very special relationships with Jeff Keighley and Norman Reedus and uh, Guillermo del Toro. But of course, Hideo Kojima has been involved with lots of titles, and one of them is a classic Game Boy Advance title called Boktai, The Sun is in Your Hands. And this was a, a game that came out in 2003. It, it sort of had the stealth mechanics built into it. You played this little, you know, mystical little dude that uh, had a sun gun, a gun that actually uh, could be powered by the sun and they did something really cool with this title. They wanted you to go outside, so you input the the, uh, the place where you were playing the game and the time of day, and then it would kind of guess 
you know, where the sun was um, in, in, in relation to the data that you put into the title. And then you would actually go outside and try to soak up some sun energy into the cartridge. There was a, a little sensor built into the cartridge and that would give your character some extra sun powers and it would take out vampires and evil, evil monsters and stuff like that with that power, you know, you know working past all kinds of minions and, and uh, little fights until you got to the bigger boss fights and stuff. Very cool idea, very cool concept, forcing you to go out and play this game in the uh, you know bright sunlight like this. This is this day is actually the inspiration for me talking about Bakhtai. I remember digging this game. I also remember it being very unique. Um, as most Tadeo Kojima, you know, diversions away from Metal Gear Solid seem to have been. He was the producer on this title. I think this game is really damn cool. And if you've got a DS that will play this, or if you've got an old Game Boy Advance that's probably still working, trust me, it probably is. It might still have power, even though you haven't plugged it in in years. Uh, you should try to go and find a copy of Boktai. The sun is in your hands. I don't know what the eBay price on this sucker is. It's probably one of those rare and hard to find and very expensive cartridges, but it is absolutely a buried treasure. All right, my friends, I had a uh, an out-of-nowhere contact from uh, BlackBerry reach out and say, we've got a new phone that we want you to take a look at. Would you like to review the BlackBerry Key 2, which I have in my hot little hands right here? And I said, sure, I haven't looked at a BlackBerry in a long time. I think I've only ever owned one BlackBerry, sort of in between. I had a Palm for a while, uh, and then the iPhones came out, and I've been pretty consistent with the iPhones, and I've had lots of Android uh, phones and tablets and stuff over the years, but I have kind of locked myself into the iOS um, sort of in the ecosystem. You know, I have a lot of movies on, the, on iTunes and lots of games and apps and stuff. And a big reason why iOS became um, my first choice was because the video game offerings were pretty large right from the very beginning. And for the most part, most of the mobile stuff in, um, uh, you know, the mobile game stuff has been iOS first, and that's why I've kind of stayed in that. But I am continuously impressed by the caliber and the quality of Android devices that I pick up and play uh, with over the years. Now, I believe, and I don't know too much about the Key 2 because I'm just getting it, and I'm just unboxing it here for the very first time, but I believe the Key 2 is an Android phone, but it has the keyboard on it. So let's take a look. So we're going to unbox this baby right now. So the box comes off. Elegant and sleek. Put that right there. Boom. Uh, we're going to put uh, we'll take the top part off right here. And there we have the device. And, of course, the big deal with uh, BlackBerry phones, a lot of them. I know they've tried a bunch of different things here, but a big deal with BlackBerry phones is that they actually have a built-in keyboard. And so that's going to be um, pretty handy for uh, tweeting and typing and um, getting some emails and stuff out there. Um, and there's a bunch of plastic film and stuff like that. I'll take all of that off when uh, I get into the review thing, but let's see what else is in the box here. So this is pretty cool. It feels per it's pretty thin. It's, um, it's definitely thicker than some of the more current, uh, you know, the iPhone 10 or, or the more recent, uh, uh, the, uh, the new, um, the Google Pixel 2 and stuff like that, or the Samsung phones. But I think part of that is they need to, to create a rugged uh, keyboard here, right? This needs to feel pretty solid, and it does. Uh, pretty good screen real estate there. Uh, it, it does feel a little bit larger. I have my iPhone right here. Oh, actually, it's about the same size, but it's thin. So it feels like the screen isn't huge, but it feels tall. But it also feels like it's going to be comfortable to type with as well. So I'm looking forward to playing with that. All right, let's see what else is in the box. I'm going to put this right here. And we have, uh, okay, just the little the case for putting the phone in. And then we have the literature that comes with the key too. It is a, an Android smartphone. Welcome to your Android smartphone. There's a quick start guide. Boop. And uh, instructions in different languages, which is all right. And then pretty straightforward we have the blackberry um uh, adapter plug right there with the blackberry logo which is cool to see um it has a headphone jack and so we have uh, blackberry themed earbuds so I'll, I'll hold those up right there be wearing those <laughs> yeah i like that it has a headphone jack I, that that uh, that gets some plus points for me right there man i still can't believe that 
The move is to uh, create a sort of one interface so that you're charging and listening to things out of the, out of the port, or to make everything wireless so you're constantly having to charge stuff. But uh, Yep, I like the little BlackBerry logos on the earbuds too. I think that if you're wearing this, you're kind of making a statement out there. You are not Apple. You are the anti-Apple. Uh, and then it has uh, presumably a USB 3 uh, charger, and it does. Yeah, USB 3, which is great. Okay, so this should charge pretty quickly. Um, it's a fair-sized phone. Again, I'll hold it up against my iPhone. I'll take my iPhone out of the case, actually, so you can see. So I've got the iPhone right there, and there's the key too. It's roughly the same length, and uh, but uh, the screen width is a little bit smaller. So you're you're giving up some screen size for the uh, the touch typing uh, uh, keyboard right there, which I can't wait to play with. So that's uh, that's going to be on my agenda to review. I'll have a review on the run for the uh, BlackBerry Key Two very soon. Uh, but right now, let's take a look at Soul Calibur 6. Just as shadows are cast where there is light, history hides away more than one truth. Mark really he also is here from Bandai Namco. We're gonna talk about Soul Calibur 6. I am so pumped for this game. I've always loved this franchise. We were talking just before we were rolling. 20 years for the Soul Calibur brand, but Soul Edge came out a year before that, right? Yeah, definitely. Soul Edge, the original arcade release, debuted in 1997. Uh, the original Soul Calibur on consoles, 1998. So it is literally a lifetime of Soul Calibur. That is awesome. All right, Soul Calibur 6 has got a bunch of new things in it, new characters, mm -hmm. new moves. What would you say kind of typifies this experience? What makes it unique? for the franchise. I think um, when you think about Soul Calibur, I'm a big fighting game guy too, but really sets Soul Calibur apart is its weapon-based gameplay, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look through the history of the franchise, what you remember are kind of these unique characters and the weapons they wield. It's all about the weapons, right? Whether it's like Soul Edge or Ivy with her kind of like sword whip. I think that's what makes Soul Calibur unique. Or Killick with the staff. Definitely, yeah, Killick with the bow staff, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Now, one of the things that I know about Soul Calibur 2 is that it was uh, a real introduction to 3D mechanics. It wasn't just 3D in name only. You had a lot of ability to kind of maneuver around your opponents, and that still remains with Soul Calibur 6. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, the Soul Calibur franchise actually coined this term 8-way run, which is 8-way directional input. So mm. uh, you can almost run freely in the 3D space. So, you know, obviously you have your 2D fighters, uh, but when you have a 3D fire, it definitely changes changes the game because you can move in and out of the background and side set, which makes it a ton more difficult but a lot more fun. Is that what you notice when you watch sort of the tournament level players is that they know how to utilize the full three-dimensional space a little bit better than somebody that's coming off of, uh, you know, a sort of head-to-head -head 2D type of experience? Yeah, definitely. I think when you add that 3D element into any kind of competitive or tournament play, it just changes the whole game up. Um, you know, some characters are actually bad at sidestepping or some of them have a bigger hitbox. So yeah. sidesteps aren't actually good for them because they can, they can get hit by a lot of different things. So um, it really sets it apart. Those guys that actually play at a really high level, they basically know their own character, but every other single character on the roster too. Um, so it's just amazing what these guys can do. I'll put on a good show for you. You've got all of these um, sort of clash type scenes that start happening in Soul Calibur 6. That's yeah. a new thing in the franchise, yeah? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, Okubusan, the producer, you know, he led the, the efforts in Tekken. Um, we added a lot of new mechanics in that game, too. And, mm. you know, the power crush, uh, uh, the rage art, these are kind of very cinematic uh, kind of moves that not only kind of make it cool for a spectator to watch, but yep. also very satisfying for a player to actually use. So, no different here. So, there's a bunch of new stuff in Soul Calibur. There's something called Reverse Edge. Uh, it's kind of like the supreme defense, but also has offensive properties to it too. So uh, basically what it is, um, let's say there's a really kind of aggro aggressive person coming onto you, you can hit this reversal edge button, hold it down, auto pair attacks, um, and then land your own counter strike to actually deliver a combo or whatnot and do some massive damage. Um, but at the same time, if you're a spectator watching that, it looks amazing, yeah. it looks crazy, yeah. yeah. You've got Geralt in this game. Yes, very cool, very cool. Tell me how that came about, because this must have been a pretty big deal for uh, CD Projekt Red. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, if you think about Geralt, 
and you look at him like you're like, wow, he is perfect for the Soul Calibur yes. universe, right? Yeah. What's very, very cool is that our European office actually published The Witcher 3 uh, in uh, their okay. territory. So the relationship is long standing, and um, you know, we have a really good working relationship with, the, with those guys. So it just made perfect sense when we put Geralt in Soul Calibur. Let's do this. So tell me about uh, some of the new modifications or the new, you know, moves or sure. weapons or outfits that we're seeing on familiar characters like Killick and yeah. and uh, Sofatia and the other ones that we know and love, Ivy. Yeah, I think um, where we can start just kind of in general what's new about Solo Calibur, obviously it's for the first time on, going to be on PC, mm -hmm. huge, you know. Yep. We understand that the PC audience is gigantic. Obviously we've seen Tekken succeed on that platform. Um, also it's the first time it's rendered on Unreal Engine 4, so that's why the game looks as beautiful as it does. Yep. In terms of mechanics, besides Reverse Relay, there's something called the Soul Charge. Um, it's a pretty cool feature where you actually can power up and deal more damage, and you actually have access to a whole new set of moves. So, you know, if you're playing against someone and they activate that Soul Charge, they can totally mix up their game plan and strategy because they have access to all these new tools. I knew you would say that. And are you planning a little bit of the, uh, the, the eSports competitive kind of tournament type of stuff that you were doing with uh, Tekken? And congrats on that, by the way. Right on. Thank you. Thank you. I think, you know, our approach from, at least from, from Bonnie Namco is, you know, you don't develop an eSports title. Yeah. You basically have to have, you know, the game will come out, the community will, will, you know, will support that eSports kind of feel for it. Yeah. So once a game is out and, you know, the, the fan base has a taste for something like that, then we'll definitely look into executing programs like the Tekken World Tour and stuff like that. Awesome. And I know Switch owners are going to be pissed at me if I don't ask about that, but mm -hmm. this would be an amazing game on, this, on the Nintendo Switch. Is there any possibility of that ever happening? You know, the Switch has, has been performing amazing. Like, so many of my friends have it, and they're like, how come you haven't joined the Switch gang yet? And I'm yeah. just like, ugh, I got no time. I got a PC, <laughs> I got an Xbox One, I got a PS4. Uh, right now, we have no plans for Switch at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, we're super excited that it's performing well, and, you know, time will tell. Come fight me anytime. I'll be waiting. The show doesn't stop there, ladies and gentlemen. We have more good content for you. Uh, Westworld wrapped up over the weekend as well. wasn't just uh, streaming all the Luke Cage. I also got that Westwood finale into my head, and I've got a review on the run right now. Season two of Westworld wrapped up last night, and yes, it blew my mind. It's an incredible season that really asks some huge, esoteric, uh, you know, existential types of questions in here. And I don't want to spoil too much, but it really kind of blends the uh, ideas and the philosophies of like, if we create these these artificial beings, th these AI robots that uh, become kind of self-aware and understand their own powers and their own abilities, what is going to happen? And that has been the, um, uh, the sort of the morality tale of Westworld right from when Michael Crichton envisioned it and the old Yul Brenner movie was crafted and now through these two seasons of the Jonathan Nolan, Elisa Joy TV show. Um, and I think they've done a really good job at crafting mystery and uh, giving us a sense of what these robotic creations, these robotic minds um, would kind of grapple with as they're dealing with their own idea of identity and purpose and uh, their existence, you know, their their reality. And so we get to see a lot of threads kind of wrapped up because we understand that a lot of these robots who have been yearning for this promised land um, are, are going to get that. And I thought that was nice that we actually get to kind of tidy some stuff up. Um, and we also get a sense of where we're going from here because we see some of the characters um, sort of move on beyond the promised land and move on beyond just sort of finding um, this sort of everlasting life almost like this robotic heaven that's sort of implied within within this episode we get to the end of the episode and there's still a lot of questions and there's still a lot of mysteries and you know we understand that people that we have seen as humans may not have in fact been humans and that this story stretches on and on and on it goes back many 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 years and i have to be honest the ambiguity of season two the way it kind of wraps up and sort of teases what could possibly happen in the future kind of reminded me of ex machina the alex garland movie and uh some of the um 
you know, tenuous kind of a concepts and threads that he crafted in that film. I feel like there is some treading water in Westworld as I look back at the totality of the season. There's a lot of, uh, you know, inward looking soul gazing that's happening as people try to figure out their place in this cra crazy world. I, I just, I, I enjoy the the grasp, the reach of this show, you know? It's very cool. But as I wrapped up this episode, I certainly had throwback moments. It's almost like a, uh, you know, a combination of Lost and Battlestar Galactica. And I, I feel like both of those shows had flaws and had some imperfect episodes and possibly imperfect seasons or finales, but they both got to me, you know, in a more profound emotional way. This is a very cool cerebral and psychological and intellectual exercise watching Westworld and trying to kind of understand the way the puzzle pieces all connect. But I feel like I don't know if I need more. We'll see. I think the challenge on Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy and HBO's part in season three, which is going to show us a world kind of outside of Westworld, is to um, envelop us with new emotions and to get us to care about these characters because there are some pretty big character ratifications towards the end of this season uh, that kind of change everything. I dug it. I dug the conclusion of Westworld and I really enjoyed season two, but uh, I think I might be okay without getting more. We'll see. I, I look forward to being surprised by season three. I'm gonna give the finale of Westworld season two an 8.5 out of 10. My buddy Paul Adamson was talking about Westworld, saying I haven't finished all of season one, so he needs to finish that before he digs into season two of Westworld. Yes, you do. It's very cool, but it certainly makes you think about uh, other, you know, kind of um, supernatural slash AI type shows, and Battlestar is one that I keep going back to. If you have never seen Battlestar Galactica, you owe it to yourself to, to get the whole complete you know season and watch all of or the whole complete edition and get and watch all of it because that show was uh i still think it's the strongest uh, sci-fi show i've seen absolutely loved it blake's shaking his head because he's a star trek guy but i freaking love bsg it took some weird tangents and so and the ending a lot of people complained about but i really really dug how deep it got and how cool it got and how dark it got and it's taken some of the shine off of Westworld a little bit for me because it's using some similar types of themes. Uh, but Westworld is really phenomenal. Anyways, enough about that. There is so much great television to watch right now. It is crazy. Uh, now that I've watched all of Luke Cage, I need to go and finish Black Lightning, and I'll try to have a review for that soon. I've been playing a lot of... Uh, uh, that Jurassic World game that I did a little Let's Play on on Friday, so I'll have a review for you of that soon. A game I have not really touched, though, is the new Unravel 2. It's a uh, two-player uh, cooperative play um, enhancement of the original game. Well, it's a sequel, but it uh, enhances some of the concepts and ideas that were presented in the first game, uh, which was beautiful, and this game also does look beautiful. It was uh, unveiled at E3, and it was released during E3. Um, and I got a review code, but this is really my first time to give it a shot. Blake is going to join me, and we're going to play uh, some two-player co-op of Unravel 2. Oh, I get to play? And do our best. I think so, yes. Uh, so I think you need to do that. Light up, and then you go to user one. Okay. Boop. And uh, here we go. So, so uh, am I the blue one? You should be. Okay, I'm the one with the devil horns? Yes. Okay, let me know if the audio is good, everyone. I haven't yes. tested it, so hopefully it'll be nicely balanced. Tyler Fisher's so damn happy that Lucifer was picked up. Yes, there's another one right there. Uh, okay, so oh, yeah, let's... I guess it's going to be tricky to follow the chat. Well, we'll do what we can. Oh, I'm, I'm the red one. I'm Yarny. You're Yarny, okay. No, no. What? It said user one over... Okay, I'm the blue one. Okay, you're right. So what are we doing? We're following this thing? Yeah, uh, this one we have to... We have to um, work together. Yes. Okay. Cool. And then we can push. Hang on. I saw still, this. I saw this. Hold still for a second. Okay. Okay. I'm just attached to you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And so now we're climbing up. I'm gonna put the uh, headphones in so I can hear a little bit of the audio just to see Whoa. see what's going on. Audio is good. Great. Every time he says my name, I get chills inside. Tyler Fisher, you rock, fan. Tyler <laughs> Fisher. <laughs> Tyler Fisher. Tyler. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Oh. There's some weird... I uh, went and... 
What are we oh, calling? you know what it is? There's some weird thing with the uh, the game capture HD. Can you put it uh, on full screen here for a second? We're having some issues. Have some you issues. watched Mr. Robot? If not, you should give it a shot. I have watched Mr. Robot, Abby. I'm not caught up. I think I watched the first two seasons. So it's a weird it's a weird audio glitch on. Uh, so I have to restart it. Okay, you put it, switch it to full screen on yeah. on us. Okay, we're good. Okay, cool. Um, all right, closing this thing, and I start this. I have to catch up on this thing, on, on Mr. Robot. It was um, a phenomenal first season and a really cool second season. Um, we actually got to meet all of those folks that are in that show at Comic-Con uh, two years ago. Let me hear it again. Yeah, it's great now. It's totally fine. Um, that's it. This is the, I can hear the ocean. So run back and forth so I can hear your footsteps? I don't think there's... Can you hear it? Yeah. Okay, that's better. The dude from uh, Mr. Robot is so good in the Pacific. Oh yes, he is. He's crazy in that show, in that in that uh, HBO show. Um, let's see. I like it when they say my name. Uh, always nice to know a fat chimp is watching. <laughs> so it's, I, I cranked it up because the game's quiet. So if the game gets really loud, let me know. <laughs> Let me know if the game gets really loud. Okay. Oh, yeah. It might actually. Or I guess we'll just talk louder if the game gets louder. Yeah. Okay. Come on over. Oh, I can turn down the game audio, actually, with this device here, too. Oh, okay. Okay. Got to stand, we... stand next to me so we can bust through this thing. There we go. All right. Can we do this already? No, that was another one. They're just they're, they're teaching us the, uh, okay. the mechanics here. Oh, so when we we're together, we're stronger, and we can jump through the... Yes. Oh, what's in here? You can change the way that you look in the menu. So if you want to change oh, your appearance. I like being blue. Okay, here we go. Let's see how far we can get in this thing. Vic, I'm stuck. Help. A fat chimp asking if anybody has tried the Bulbasaur shot at EXP. It was awesome <laughs> to see everybody at EXP. I've, I've reached out to Brian, and uh, we may end up doing something there. But what's happening, of course, is that... With EXP, which is a uh, downtown Vancouver uh, video game uh, bar and restaurant, um, they're closing at the end of the month. They, uh, they couldn't work out a, a deal with their landlord, so they're closing the shop. Uh, but they've, they've become very busy, so it, it may be a little, like we might be a little bit in the way if we go down there to try to shoot. But, but how uh, did you get over Yep, you just jump on stuff. I want to get up here, though. If we do go down to EXP, we will absolutely let you guys know that Is we're going down there. Is there anything good up here? Maybe we just go down and, and have burgers and not shoot. Maybe. And just do a little meet, meet up. Would you guys like to come and hang out with us if we go to EXP? Get some burgers? Uh, I love their something. veggie burger. I think we have to break these rocks somehow, but um, see where I am. Okay. There's you can change something. direction in midair. Okay. But how do we? There's no like weapons or anything, right? Not yet. Oh, I can pull you up, can I? Uh, yeah. Oh, you're swinging. Oh, that's how we get up. You think? Yeah, I'm supposed to go over here and then you. Sw oh, I'm, I gotta get on that and then you gotta swing. Okay. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna go right. I what? gotta get. I'm trying to get. Oh, fuck. I'm trying. We gotta get over to the log that's like. This one here. Just pull me up. Yeah, now I'm gonna pull you up. Now you can s uh, swing over to that log. Okay. Or I guess I could just jump there. Yeah. Okay. Well, well climb we up. Yeah, now we'll just jump on there. Okay. I don't think we're into the heavy mechanics yet. I think they're just teaching. Th those it. rocks look like I could break them though. They're just teaching us some stuff here. Okay. Press. We're to we're say early hi. in this. Oh, there's reactions. Oh, Little Big Planet had these. Remember? Yeah. And so did uh, oh, Abe, I can clap. Uh, Abe's Odyssey. <laughs> Where's my guy? You're oh, I've fire. already gone through. Oh, okay. okay it's waiting for me. I like the first Unravel. I didn't finish it, but I enjoyed it from what I played. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was t it was too tough. Yeah, because it has a cute see aesthetic. Yeah, it, so was, you, it you was too frustrating. I got I got really pissed off. I think I got to stand game. here, and then you can get over. Or one of us stands up down there. So that goes down. Yeah. Hang on. Oh, I see. The. Uh, but how do the I get over now, though, Vic? You just go to the end of it, and then just fall down there, and then jump onto the, onto the branch. I can't do it. I'm That's split. as far as the. Uh, you gotta come back so I can get over. Here, I'll just pull you up. Can you just pull me up? Am I pulling you? Up? I think you gotta come to where I'm, Vic. 
Okay. Come here! Can you try to pull me up from that? How do you do the Spider-Man uh, thing? How did you... Oh, that's... That, that, okay, let's... What are you pressing? I'm pressing the uh, trigger buttons here. They haven't taught us the mechanic. When I do the here, trigger... I'll, oh, show, I'll show you how you do it, okay? No, I did it, I, I, but I was going to see if you could pull me up, though. You go like this. No, I figured it out. And then I, you just fall I, down this guy. But I wanted guy, to be lazy about it. And then you jump it. over here. I don't think they've taught us how to do any of this stuff. What were the chat's thoughts on the uh, Westworld finale? Ah, God damn it. I think everybody that's seen it thought it was pretty cool. Okay, Vic, where do I go exactly? Just go to the end and then just fall down on the... Uh, on the first log? Yep, yeah, on that log and then jump across. There you go. Okay. All right. Boop. Ninja Boop. guide in our way up here. Yeah. So far, there's a lot more fluidity to the way that this thing controls. Yeah, the first one is a bit cumbersome. Yeah. How did you get up there? You just jump off of the thing. Jump off oh, of that I block. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Gotcha. There you go. That's as far as the, the yarn will let me go. Come on. <laughs> it's making me, Come I'm, on, I'm buddy, you let's back. go. Come on. Now, can you play this one person? Yes. And, and there's like an AI blue guy? Yeah, and then you can switch between the characters whenever you need to. I like that the game is called Unravel 2, but it's like, the, like TWO. Like, because there's two ra unravel characters. Um, I think we're supposed to go down the other way, but actually, because I did, I did check this but out just to make sure the, the mechanic. thing. Yeah, I know, but there's. I think there's might be a secret over this way. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get that achievement. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Oops. No, that's as far as we go. Okay, so no, we have maybe to go if back. we both jump on this at the same time. It'll just break it. But look at it, because it's a different color, so there's something we're supposed to do with this. Okay. There's something we're supposed to do. Really the, cool looking game, huh? Maybe we do it at the very end. I, I think we just go back here. Okay. Come on, buddy. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that's it. Jump over there. You got it. Oh, that's why they have that, so you can go double back if you screw up. Yeah. And then we'll come back down. Yeah. We're neglecting the chat. Now I think we're in the game here. Yeah, so if you guys want any, uh, we got a hashtag Battletoads. <laughs> How many of those we're going to get until oh, that freaking game comes out, and then it's going to be 20 more years of Battletoads. Hopefully that game is good. Okay, how do you do the Spider-Man oh, thing? You use the uh, R2 to loop on there, and then just climb okay, up. Okay, got it. There we go. So L2 is to retract, R2 is to shoot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How come I'm not, uh, oh, there it is, okay. Yeah, you gotta hang up there. Okay, pretty cool. So far I'm Spider enjoying this Man. as a, as a two-player thing. I'm enjoying this a lot more than, uh. Yes, it's chill, right? Yeah. This is the, because a way out is like a tricky thing to do with another person. Uh, so ah, yeah, you have to really pay attention, yes. Yeah. This is like, you know, you just... It's just fun. I think that was the uh, the goal this time. Yeah. Let's just make it a lot more enjoyable to play. What's that uh, other... Have you guys asked EXP if they're willing to open earlier for you guys? If they're busy, they could bring more customers, I assume. I, I honestly just had the one interaction with Brian. Um, who runs the joint, so I'll, I'll reach out to him again today. And we'll figure it out. I know we've got like one week left, which is so sad, because that place is really cool and we need places like that in this city. Do you guys have, because I know we're not all in Vancouver here, do you guys have... Um, Can you pull me up? Uh, barcades, how, did, how do you do it? How, it just pull L2? Uh, L2? Yeah. Can you, can't you just like pull me up? No, I don't think so. Oh, here we go. Oh, there we go, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't even have, I can just be lazy and let you do it. <laughs> do you guys have barcades in, uh, in your cities and do you frequent them? And when I was in um, Ottawa, there was a pierogi and pinball joint, which I thought was amazing. I forget the name of it, but I had a really good time there. Yeah, this is very forgiving. Yeah. I can just. Tug on you um, we have Thorazine 666. How do the controls feel on this? Solid, fun. I like it. Yeah. Accessible. 
So far. Oh, oh. Uh. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We're made out of yarn. We can deal with that. The water kills you, right? I remember that from the last game. Fat Chimp, uh, with a with a good point about EXP, it did last quite a long time. That's true. How long was it there for? Well, I, when we were there, I saw all kinds of um, event posters that dated back to like 2011 and 2013 and stuff like that. So okay. it's been around for a long time. It's hard to run a business like that in Vancouver. Well, we have yeah, the the um, bylaws and stuff like that. But I, things had been changing and things had been loosening and and going in a in a better direction for the place. But and also the not just the liquor bylaws are really yeah. stupid here, but rent is so high. People are very introverted, so they don't really go out as much. Mm -hmm. oh, God damn it. Um, Steven Silva asking anyone else get their EP shirts last weekend. Yes, we, uh, through E3 week, we opened up our first store, the Teespring one, and now we've opened up our other one on Design by Humans. Uh, they're both under EPN TV, if you're still looking for it. And the Design by Humans store has more colors and also hoodies and um, a phone case as well that you can pick up too. Um, and then with Teespring, just it's- Just try it's pressing L2, Vic, and see if you can just come up to me that way. Yeah, see? Oh, you, I, you bring me up. No, you, you bring go. yourself up. See? Oh, okay, cool. Um, and now what? Oh, now we just we swing, swing over here? Yeah. Okay, cool. You got it? Yeah. Okay, I think stay there, because I got to come to you. Boom. Oh, okay, never mind. Wait. That's uh, cool. Uh, uh, it's very Spider-Man. Yeah, Teespring is the this shirt, basically, the black shirt. So if you're just looking for the black shirt, and, uh, oh, hang on. Hang on. First and you like Teespring, um, we're probably going to add a little bit more stuff to Teespring, by the way, and I think there is going to be a uh, Canadian store oh, we that we deal with, too. we got to move this. Uh, no announcements yet. we got to hook onto this log and pull it out. Okay, so that's R2, right? And then hold onto it. Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool. Is there anything under there? I wonder. No, I don't think so. Got to get those achievement points. Look at how realistic everything looks. It's really cool. Yeah, I, I remember that about the first game, too. It's gorgeous. How, how, do we, how did you get up there, Vic? I'm really, really, really good at video games. I'm a professional video game player. I don't know if you know that about me. 25 years of professionally playing video games. Yeah. Uh, oh, somebody's got theirs. Mine from Teespring is en route. Okay. Oh, man. Paul Adamson. Yes, we've got to figure out something so on uh, I think, to get that down. I think i got to hold bright. this down while you go up there. Uh, you'd think with uh, the tons of places could get great business. Tyler Fisher, uh, you bring up an excellent point there, my friend. I gotta, you gotta go up that way while I'm holding it down. Okay. Um, Tyler Fisher saying, with all of the cool shows being made in Vancouver, that there would be lots of things. That's that's one of the dilemmas of this city, so and one of the things. There. Wait there. Okay. Now, now go stand there where the wisp thing is. Okay. Let now. me let me finish my my answer here. Um, that's one of the dilemmas with this city because everybody does work very, very hard on these things and um, it's a service town. There's a lot of productions, but there's also a lot of tourists and there's a lot of outside money that comes into the city and then the city kind of handles that responsibility for all of this money and people. And that definitely affects the amount of time that people have to go out and party and, and have fun and play. And that affects all of these businesses, not just EXP, but bars and restaurants and stuff all across the city. It's a tough, it's a tough part of the work. Um, we do get a lot of tourists coming through and they go to a lot of those kinds of things. But the city itself, and I learned this when we were putting on the, the Canadian Video Game Awards and stuff, um, it, it, I think it's... It's expensive to live in Vancouver, but it's also people work really hard and they put in a lot of hours, partially because it's so expensive here, but partially it's a feast and famine kind of thing with uh, service work. When you get it, you just gotta work all the time. And that's definitely true of the TV shows. Now, all that being said, some of the cool things that we've been able to do with, uh, with the Vancouver Film School is kind of dip into that creative community and um, you know, stay tuned for more announcements like that because it, it is pretty rad that there is so much creative work in this town. And uh, Tyler, you are right. We should have venues where people can go and hang out and uh, um, celebrate some of that work on a more regular basis. Oh, we can climb up these vines. Yeah, that's cool. Good. Okay, so that was, that was the chat portion of the Let's Play in Chat. 
Uh, <laughs> comment, Vic, uh, look up I, the IGN vid where they travel around in Portland, Oregon and go to various cool gaming bars and locales. Yeah, Portland is incredible. I, I've spent time in Portland and I couldn't believe it. It's an inspiring city for that kind of stuff. It's like Vancouver if Vancouver were a little less introverted, right? Well, it's... I mean, it's like, I think it really has to do with the service thing, you know? Like, to live in this city and to afford the... Because it's one of the highest um, mortgage and rent costs in the world, let alone North America. So to live in this city, you have to work. And then part of why you live in this city is you... Oh, that's great. I can just hang on to you. This is so much easier. Uh, and part of why this... And part of what you, why you want to live in this city is so that when you're not working, you're outside. You know, and so both of those things, the amount of work that people do and the amount of outside time that they do really negates the amount of inside going to a cool club or going to, you know, some kind of I think we got to tie a knot so comic store opening or whatever. You, you got to do that award one. show or whatever. OK, tie, tie knots. Oh, I see. And no. then we're creating. Uh, oh, I see. Cool. But how do we tie the knot uh, at each access point? Oh, I see. But how do we. So you go over there. Because you can't reach it, though. Why not? And then you How go over you there. How did you do that? Boom. And now we bounce How on How did that. you get that far, though? I'm really awesome at video games. I didn't, I, but mine <laughs> wouldn't go that far. <laughs> Let go of the R2 button. And uh, then just walk over. Yeah, you can yeah. I got you. Okay, cool. Oh, I keep thinking I'm you. How do we... Am I you? No, am I, am I blue or... How do we detach now that we're... Hold on. Am I blue or red? I'm blue. Okay, what's happening? We're still stuck onto the thing. Oh, okay, let go. But how do we... How do we get it off of there? Press the square button. Oh, there we go. L1. Cool. Come on up, buddy. Gotcha. Nice. Oh, an L1 for hints. We don't need no hints. <laughs> yes, we do. No, we don't. <laughs> we got this. Uh, yeah, Portland is insane. Rent mortgage hikes constantly. Glad we live outside of it. Toot toot, Vix Horn. <laughs> Um, the Flash uses Portland for its long shots. Yeah, Portland's incredible, and uh, it, it is expensive there, and I know it's getting more and more pricey, Tyler, but you should see, you should you should look at real estate apps in Vancouver, and you can sort of look at house prices. We have to get that up there somehow. It's we crazy have, here. We have to make another bridge and then push this thing. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. How do we... How so do we... you tie knots with the square button. But... Okay, hang on. Before you do that, i got to push this one back. Okay. I gotta push this back before we do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then we just bounce. We go, oh, we I see. We created a bridge. Thing, yeah. Cool. Oh, wait. But how do. We... Shit. You can push objects over bridges, so now if I do that. There we go. Neat. That doesn't make any kind of sense. But no. It would just it's fall video off, games, man. Yeah, it's fine. How did I let go of that thing before? Uh, square. Oh, square. Okay. Or a circle? Yeah, square. This is really cool. <laughs> they're like cheering because they're. Yay! They're like, Yay! Oh, we gotta make a bridge. Okay. Yeah. So, swing and bridge. How do you swing and bridge? Okay. And then jump up. And then tie that right there. There we go. I don't know how you did that. It's a little clumsy, but a little less clumsy than the other one. Okay, you have to do so. Jump I, and then go. So pull yourself up, press yep. the square button. Yeah. And then swing over to the other one. There you go, and let go. And then press the square button. There you go. Climb up, square, boom. Okay. We are awesome at video game. Get up there. Boink. Oh, it's How like a little Cirque du Soleil action here. Cool. This is making me really want to play Spider-Man right now. Hey, dude. <laughs> what are you doing? You can just press L2. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see if it would leave you. It totally did. It screwed me up. Okay. <laughs> can I can I get just 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 unhook everything and do L2 all the way up. Okay. Can I get over there? There we go. No, but you can just you can just climb up mine there. I don't think I can. 
No, you just on you just do L two. Come on. Climb up my. Uh... It's all screwed up, man. <laughs> no, it's... if you unhook everything, you can because you can climb to where I am, right? Uh, I don't think I can. I'm not hooked onto you at all. What'd you do to me, dude? <laughs> I don't know. Why'd you take the bridge out, <laughs> I don't man? Know what I did. <laughs> You're welcome back. Okay, go up there, put the bridge yep. back on. There we go, there now we're okay. <laughs> All right, there we go. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm up! Shit. Okay, so climb up, there you go, bounce. So you just hold L2 and you climb up to where the other person is. There we there go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> this is still a little clumsy. Oh, wait, wait, I'm still trapped here. Okay, there we go. Let go! I can't let go. I think it's square or circle? Circle, okay. There we go, cool. Buddy of mine knows the owner of the Bar Arcade in LA 82. I just don't make my way out there. I've heard the uh, the LA Barcade stuff is incredible. Uh, my friend lives in Santa Cruz, California, and holy hell, I do not envy him. Uh, the entire Bay Area is not, yeah, like, property's going up all over the all over the world. If there's just nice places anywhere, ooh, how about an EP bar, Doy Owen? I like the sound of that, Doy Owen. Um, We'd have to sell a lot of t-shirts, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have a physical space. That would be so cool. Hold the yarn with L2. Uh, I bet they do even a small percentage of the okay, home prices here. Hold L2. Just yeah. stay there and hold L2. Okay. All right, cool. And then you swing. So how do I... I think you just press the X button. Okay. Yeah, we did it. Nice. How do we do a high five? Uh, Yay. Then you can clap. Yay. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> this game is damn cute. I like it. This needs to be on the Switch so that they can make a... Yeah, they said they an they couldn't do it on the Switch. They climb back up. Uh, I want to get... Is there still an official EPM forum, EPN forum or group? Um, there, there really isn't because we just... We're running out of time to sort of connect with everybody and make stuff. Uh, but Discord is what we're going to do, and that's what Taz is uh, bringing up. And I, and I talked with uh, Daniel uh, Blade Blur at uh, E3. It was amazing to meet him there and, and talk with him about that stuff. And we are still going to connect, and we're, we're going to put this... Uh, I think you gotta, you got to swing, Vic. He's already put it together. We just have to kind of transfer, and then I've got to start uh, uh, inviting people and doing all of that stuff. you gotta, you got to swing over to that one. It just becomes a... Um, okay, now, hey, hang on. Okay, hold I'm, L2. Okay, so gotcha, to gotcha. You. Just becomes a... Uh, just a question of time and priorities. Like, what, uh, what can I, what can oh I put shit. together? Or what can we put again. together? I was driving down the 99 from Squamish when uh, last week's E3 wrap-up episode was live. I listened and really enjoyed an EP EPN podcast. would be pretty rad. Paul Adams said, Yes, I know people would like to see Vic's basement and audio podcasts and stuff back. Um, we're, we're pretty rockin' busy with the amount of content that we're putting together. Uh, but I miss audio podcasts, I miss Vic's Basement. Um, it'd be good to have, like, a guest on for an hour or something like that, sort of longer form. Um, that stuff will come back. It's just kind of, like, one step at a time here. We just got t-shirts made. <laughs> Are you holding L2? I am, yeah. That was such a big deal to get those things made and then to start those stores and, and, uh, but one step at a time. We want to do all of that stuff. Good. Okay. So cool. Uh, so we'll get rid of that one. I actually have some personal news. I don't know if you guys caught this on social media, but um, oh fuck! I think I just screwed that up, didn't I? I did it. Um, TEDx Vancouver has asked me to be the host for this year's event in September, which is um, such a huge thrill and a, and an honor. I can't wait. Um, I was a uh, speaker at TEDx Vancouver in 2011 before my daughter was born. And uh, that was one of the coolest experiences nope. of my life. Okay, we, we're not very good at this. Uh, so it's, uh, and it was at the Chan Center where the, the new uh, TEDx Vancouver show is going to be this year's TEDx Vancouver show. So I am super um, Are you stoked. holding L2? I am. Yeah. Leap. I guess you have to make those calls, right? You got to talk to each other. Yeah. So swing up there. You can't just both go for the jump. Oh, fuck, that's stupid. Get up there, buddy. But the problem is I can't go past that one. 
There you go. There you okay, go. now I'm, I'm coming. holding L2. Yeah. Now go up to that one. Oh. If you go down a bit more, you can just swing in front of it and then land. How come I can't just let go and then leap? Okay. Oh. Like, like <laughs> honestly. You oh, can. I have That's to how go. did it before. I have to go underneath the thing? Uh, no, because you can't go all the yes, way under. Yes, I can. No, because then we're going to get caught underneath Vic. Okay, well, how do I get up there? You did it before. You got to just kind of okay. jump. Okay. Once you're in the air. How do I, how do I let go? Uh, I don't know. Is, is it L1? I think it's... I did it. I can't remember how I did it, though. Oh, come on. Or R2, maybe? Maybe I'll try L2. There, there you is. go. Okay. Whew. Now, stay there. Now, okay. you're holding L2, right? Yep. You're holling this L2? A, I'm holding... Oh, oh, don't let go. I fell off. Okay, here we go. No. I gotta... What I gotta do is let go of you once you're in the air. So once you... Okay, I'll do the next one. Okay. okay I'm gonna let go of you right now. Okay. Oh, jeez. I got you. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is pretty you intense. Need, you need a bit more slack. Okay. Coming down. Okay. Right there should be good, yeah. Okay. Okay. Don't hit the wall. Let it go. Okay. All right. Now this, but this is tricky because there's. Will you start sliding once I let go? I don't know. I think. Can you go up as far to the top as you I, can? I fell off the top. If I go up a little bit more, you can at least go a little bit more than that. Yeah, that's about as high as I'm going. Okay. All right. I'm coming to you then. Okay, do it. 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 Let's see. Let's see you. You're moving. I'm. Because you're letting me go, right? Yeah. Okay. Are you I'm, holding L2 now? I am. Okay. Climb up. Oh, yes. Oh, come on. <laughs> How are we supposed to stay on that this one? Is, this is where we throw the controllers. How are we supposed to stay on that one? I think we just jump. Oh, you can swing. Look at the hint. You can swing from, me, from the yarn when it's looped. So maybe we do have to loop it over that one? Yeah. Okay, you're going to swing first or I'm going to swing first? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll swing first. Okay. These ones you can just sort of pass in front and then kind of land. Okay. Okay, I've got L2. But that one you gotta. Okay. Uh... Oh! <laughs> so close. I think, I think this is the one where you have to loop. So go down as far as you can go. And okay. Then loop up around and try to land on the. Okay, here we go. Oh no, we gotta. No, we gotta loop over the one I'm on. So can you loop across? I guess you can. No. No, you gotta do it on that one. Yeah. Yeah. So loop under this one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, come on. You can't go up past the thing. Yeah, there you go. This is going to drive yeah, they me have, nuts. They're going to give you just enough room. I, I, don't, I don't like the Look, sort they, of... Look, you can tell they gave you just enough room to do it. I, I can't get up there. <laughs> I think you got to be up a bit higher, Vic, so you have more uh, No, no, speed. it's got to be this. I gotta get all the way around across. Come on, come no, on! Look, look, there's like a crevice in the thing. It's like a loop. There's a crevice where. See on the the one to my to our left. Okay. There's like it's like it, it's even shaped like a circle. Okay. See, come back. So come towards me. Okay, right where you're standing underneath right now. There's like a. Yes. It's like a. Yes. So you gotta be in there and then go down, like uh, like. In here. Yes, like that. But don't go up all the way over the top. <laughs> oh my god, this is gonna. So you've got This is so frustrating, you guys. Or you know what you could do? You could stand here and yes. then just hit down and and uh, square and like jump down on. I, I don't know why I can't leap. Come, why can't come, I just, just, come, just jump where, from this stupid thread? Why does it make me go back the other way? Just come to where I am. Okay. Climb up to the top. Yes, just come to where I okay. am. Okay. All right. Okay. Now press. Just press L two so I can get over to the next. Okay. One. Just stay there. Don't. You can just jump that. Yeah, but so so watch. Just stay there. Okay. Okay. Now don't don't go anywhere. Stay there. Just hit down and 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 X. Yeah. Now you. Yeah. That's how you do it to get over that. It stops my swing. I don't know. It stops my here. You want to try? Yeah. It stops my I can't swing. Can't let go of the here. You gotta press L. Okay, I got it. You got it. 
Let's see if you understand. How I don't. To deal know, with. I think I don't know if I do. It's so frustrating. Well, it's just tricky until you get the. I think you're supposed to do it like this. This is what drove me down. nuts about the first unravel, though. It's like it gets to a wall, and it's just like, no, the physics don't work with you the way that you think. Why don't we should. just try it the way we were? Because I think the way we were, we were almost, we almost had it. So just um, get up there. Well, here we'll. we'll I, I think we'll it's right though. It says you can swing from the yarn when it's looped over an object. Because how are we going to get to the other one? I don't know. <laughs> this is what happened with the first unravel. We got to a point. It was just like, yeah, no, let go. Let can't go. get, can't get through. Just let go. No, well, not now. Okay. You got to wait till I'm in the air, like right there. Okay. Okay. Uh, right. Fuck. That's what I did last time. It's clumsy, man. It's well, it's hard. It's not. I don't. I wouldn't say the controls are clumsy. I would say it's hard. <laughs> Ryan Landis says, I know how to deal with this area. Throw the controller in rage. You might see that, you guys. Gotta, you gotta let go of me when I'm okay. in the right spot. Okay. All right, I was paying attention to the chat. Okay. Yeah, this is tricky. This Right? Is yes, I, I know. It can, sucks. Can we do that? I was as doing a... just as well as you are. Hold, hold the L2 button. Yeah. Okay, I'm climbing up. I'm jumping over. Nope, can't do it. Okay. Why are we tethered? That That's like, that's not that far. We should be able to jump that. Nope, falling. Right? It's it's past. It's further than we can jump. Okay. All we, right. We well, got, I'm gonna try to swing. You got it. You need more. Okay. There it goes. Here it goes. Spider Man, come on. Okay. okay now, now I got you. Oh. Okay. No. Go down. Go down the thing. Well, I'm gonna fall off the edge. I, I'm holding R R two L two. So just go down. Yes. Go down all the way. Fall off the edge. Okay. Now, come back to where I am. That's okay. how you do it. Okay. Like, go all the way down to the bottom and, like, walk back to where I am. That's as far as I go. It's not giving you any more slack? No. Okay. Fuck. You let go? If I let go, you're just going to fall. There we go. That's how you do it. God, this game is ridiculous. Come on! It's it's not meant to be like it's like Meat Boy. You gotta sit and figure it out. Okay. I just don't I think like you can get that up there some now. of the physics make sense. You can get up there them. now. Just keep swinging. But then how? Oh, I guess you just you, you, I pull you up. Give yourself a little less slack, and you can okay. get there. There you go. Okay. There you go. Now okay. just press L two. Okay. Got you. <gasps> it's that fine. took some time. It's but that's the point of the game. You're not. It's not meant to be like. <laughs> Again, video games for physio lost three percent of movement. Uh, uh, you guys are talking about personal stuff in here. Currently, my day starts with an hour of stretching. Okay, Taz is talking about all kinds of health stuff, which is good, Taz. It's good. All right. Uh, so Can I'm swinging go? you. Okay. Whoa, go. look at that action. How did we do that? Incredible. Come, right, come to me, my brother. My little blue I, I, brother. I like this. I, I don't mind having a puzzle to figure out. That's okay. It gets frustrating, but yeah. you know, it's it's not a run and gun platformer. Mm -hmm. It's not Mario, right? Like it's a puzzle game. Okay. Um, I have uh, five minutes left of unravel, so let's see if let's we... see if we can finish the tutorial. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. So I think I stay here, and you can swing. Yeah. Let me, the... Okay. Let me down. Didn't I? I'm not pressing anything. Okay. Let go. This is BS. Okay. Oh. I thought you were really good at video games, Vic. I was really good until I started playing Unravel. Okay, come on. Bonk. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine a VR version of this where it's like first person. You're just like swinging everywhere and smacking into things. I'm enjoying this. I think it's fun. No, it's cool. It is cool. I don't. I don't mind having a puzzle. Um, I don't. I don't know if it's couch co-op or if there's online co-op. Didn't Didn't you die in the first game the second you touched water? I can't remember. I remember. I, like I remember part. getting very angry in the, in the last game. I could not deal with it. We were not doing let's play in chats back then. I think I did stream it though, and I sucked at it, and that was that. So press R one to slow down time. Yeah. How did? How is that a thing? Okay, so. How do we? It's a thing oh. up there. We gotta get to. How do we? I can't reach it though. Uh.
Okay. How Pre do you press. Aim your... Do we? Is is it longer when we get together? I don't know. I think that's good. <laughs> I'm starting yeah, to get it's antsy. Take us a while. To <laughs> yeah. it out. It's a puzzle game, though. You're supposed to sit. Uh, it and is. It is. It out, right? Maybe we'll play a little bit more. Would have been very. It would have been funny to see if uh, play this game with Scott C. Jones. I think okay, we would have seen some hurling of controllers if I played this with Scott C. Jones. Uh, that's going to be it for our EP Live today. Um, we will let you know if we're doing EP Live tomorrow. I still don't know if we're, if we're going to be doing that or not, but uh, a lot more content is coming to you every day this week because we bring you the latest and everything cool. Of course, we've got tons of other material for you to check out, so please do. And if you like what we do, hit subscribe, that little bell, and if you're so inclined, that sponsorship button as well. Thanks for watching, everybody. Remember, play forever.